All right, let's turn to Zechariah chapter 5. Zechariah chapter 5. While you find that Zechariah 5, let me say, I believe that people don't believe in UFOs are mentally unbalanced. <laughs> I think by the time 5 million people have seen something and borne witness to it, it's there. After all, in the court of law, you have to get two or three. There have been 5 million people have seen UFOs, and there's no way in the world to say they're all deluded. I think, I think they're there. I just don't think the Air Force is there. I think the Air Force is going to Argentina. <laughs> Did you know in, the folks in Granada, Spain, were afflicted by so many UFOs in 1977, they asked the UN General Assembly to set up a UN agency to investigate them, and nobody in the UN was interested. All the interest in Taiwan and Formosa and Afghanistan, Iraq and Iran, the Near East, and the Far West and all that junk. And there's something going on they can't even handle. They can't even handle. We'll talk about that today. All right, Zechariah 5, 1. <clears throat> then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. That'd be something to see. And he said to me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. <laughs> Bible's all real, always real plain. <laughs> And I answered and said, I see a flying roll. The length thereof was twenty cubits, the breadth twenty, uh, thereof ten cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. And I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and shall enter the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Now, here's a spy, flying scroll like a window shade wrapped up, and it's got writing on the front and back of it. The thing's about this long here and about this wide. And this thing is sailing through the air, and when it goes into a house, it rots everything in the house. And somebody says, what's that? It's a UFO. What's a UFO? An unidentified flying object. Amen? Has anybody got that thing identified? I never met anybody ever identified it. That is an unidentified flying object. It doesn't have to be a saucer to be a UFO. If it's unidentified, it's a UFO. Verse 5, Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said to me, Lift up now thine eyes, and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. And he said, Moreover, this is their resemblance throughout all the earth. And he shows it. There was lifted up a town of lead, and this is a woman that sat in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephod, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mount thereof. Then lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings. For they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephod between the earth and heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephod? And he said to me, To build it a house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Here's something fly along up in the air, it looks like a bushel basket. And the thing flies along, and about that time a woman pops out of the middle of that thing, sitting there. The fella comes along, takes a lead cover like a manhole cover, and slaps it down on top of that bushel basket so the woman doesn't show. And when he slaps down that lead on top of there, two women come out of that basket with a wing like a stork. And that's why when you see pictures of angels, they're always drawn as long-haired women with stork wings. And that's why they talk about babies coming, they talk about the stork coming. You see, you never get away from the King James Bible. And these things that fly along here are not angels, because they're women, they're not men. They're not angels, because the angels don't have wings, and these things have wings. And they pick this bushel basket up, and they carry it off to around Iran and Afghanistan, and put it down there. You say, what is that? That's a UFO. And you say, well, can you give us any more information than that? No, I can't, because it's unidentified. That's an unidentified flying object. Now, when they talk about these things, most of them talk about Ezekiel chapter 1 and Ezekiel chapter 10, about Ezekiel's vision. But I'm not going that because that's well known. But up and down America today, there's no end of literature about unidentified flying objects. And some of these fellows have gone so far as to say that Jesus Christ came down here in a UFO. I've read articles where he went back to the Mount of Olives in the UFO. I've read articles where God came down on Mount Sinai and gave the Ten Commandments from the UFO, which is wild, crazy stuff when you think about it. I mean, when did a UFO occupant ever say, Thou shalt not steal? I never heard that before. Who ever heard of a UFO occupant telling you about the restoration of Israel like Ezekiel did? Who ever heard of a UFO occupant going back to heaven and saying, You should be witness to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, not a most part of the earth? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. 
But I do believe in UFOs, and I'm going to talk about that this morning uh, from the Bible and from other sources. Now, Father, may the Holy Spirit who came here to guide the just in all truth, guide the just in all truth. Uh, we don't want to be sensational for the sake of being sensationalists. We don't be, want to be extremists for the point of getting attention. We want to know the truth and what the truth is. You said the truth shall make us free. And Lord, we want the truth in every field as well as the Bible field. And we look to thee in this hour to give us wisdom and understanding and give us knowledge, give us discernment, and this congregation. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. All right, UFOs, first of all, have biblical documentation. If you want to write down the references, the references are, first of all, in Zechariah 5, where we just were. Then they're in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 19, 21. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 19, 21. And 2 Samuel 5, verse 20 to 23. 2 Samuel 5, verse 20 to 23. And Ezekiel chapter 1 and Ezekiel chapter 10. There's no new thing under the sun. And if it's up there, it's in the Bible. It's in here. If, it's up, if the thing is there, it'll show up here. I know simply that all these folks keep alibying away UFOs like they don't exist. I know they exist. I don't think so. I don't think some seagull was flying around at night with a flashlight in his mouth. All the, all the stuff people are saying. One of these famous scientists, he said, he said, sometimes I think we're alone in the universe and sometimes I think we're not. And either way, the thought is terrifying. It doesn't terrify me. I know we're not alone in the universe. I'm not even alone here on the ground. I've got the Lord with me. Now, I'm not worried about something from outer space because I'm going up before he comes down. But they have biblical documentation. All right, they have historical documentation. I'll be as brief as possible. Pliny the Elder in the Naturalist Historia, Natural History, writes about them. Seneca in his Questionolium Naturalium, Questions of Nature, writes about them. Before the time of Christ, Julian wrote about them. After the time of Christ, Tito Livio, Renato Gatto, Roberto Pinotto, Herodian the Syrian, 170 A.D. And when these people write about UFOs, they call them fireballs, or they call them suns or moons. And when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 A.D., there were fireballs and suns and moons all around that place. Whatever UFOs are, they've been around for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. In Plutarch's life, the life of Caesar, 200 A.D., you'll find a reference to UFOs. In Bede's Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorium, the historic of the history of the Gentile Church, the English Church, 900 A.D., you find a reference. Gregory of Tours, Historia Francorum, History of France, has a reference to them. In 810, Peter Caroli by Alcivan has a reference to them. If you have a copy of Shakespeare, when you go home, get out your Shakespeare and look in Henry the Sixth, Act Three. And Henry the Sixth, Act Three is a UFO. If you can get a hold of a copy of Columbus Diary, when Christopher Columbus came to America at 10 p.m. October the 11th, 1492, is an entry in the ship's log on a UFO. And when Columbus sails for America, he sails right into the center of the Bermuda Triangle. That's where he comes. When that old boy leaves and finds that passage, he is guided man, and he lands right in the middle of it. Jose Bonilla was the first man to photograph UFOs. I've got his photograph at home, taken in 1883, August the 12th. The photograph shows 150 flying cigars. I mean, those things are shaped just like stogies. And there's 150 of them in a row, and they're in perfect formation. They don't have any rough edges. It's not a cloud formation, not a cloud bank. It's something. Do you realize after 1883 they began to build the ridgibles? And they built them, built them shaped just like a cigar. Whatever those things were, they can move faster than an airplane can move now. 1883. I have at home almost 200 photographs of UFOs. I guess about half of them are faked. Suppose half of them are faked. What's you going to do the other half? I've got photographs of UFOs from Japan, New Zealand, Australia, China, Czechoslovakia, Germany, Bulgaria, Russia, Sweden, Norway, Argentina, Brazil, anywhere in this earth, you name it. Somebody got a photograph of a UFO. If you have John Wesley's journal, you'll find a reference to a UFO in John Wesley's journal. And it's represented as something that comes out of the water and spins and travels out across the land over there in North Island. UFO has been around. They've been documented in history. That isn't all. They not only have biblical documentation and historical documentation, they have experimental documentation. By that, I mean UFOs have been seen, they've been tracked, they've been photographed, they've been entered, they've been chased, they've been shot at, they've been collided with. 
Now, when you watch a UFO show, all you see is some stupid little thing Hollywood put out, you know, you know, third encounters of the Frankenstein kind, all that. Or else you see somebody with a required reporter giving somebody a microphone, and they say, well, I was out there in the backyard putting them along, and I saw this here thing come down the field. <laughs> but it isn't like that. It isn't like that. You know who's seen UFOs? Eleven Air Force observers, captains, majors, and colonels. Six naval observers, captains, commanders, lieutenant commanders. Four Marine Corps officers, majors and captains, five Army observers, 14 scientists and engineers, 40 airline pilots, the President of the United States, and the Secretary of the Navy. Fellows don't believe in UFOs, something wrong, they're mentally unbalanced. These fellows are aerial spotters. These aren't just Navy or Air Corps men. These are Air Force aerial observers. And they're all crazy. You know, I've been, I've been around for a good while, and I've observed some things that, I mean, the news doesn't get in the paper. Did you know something? I've been flying since 1946. That's, uh, what, 33, 35 years, something like that in there, or longer than that. And when I first began to fly, Pensacola was a cardboard shack, man, and you take Atlanta was a plywood shack, and there weren't any jets, there weren't any turboprops that were left over DC 5s and 7s in World War II. When I first began to fly, that thing was just a big plywood room with a bunch of light bulbs screwed in the top of the thing. And something like for 20 years, I'd fly those planes. They'd say, on the takeoff and the landing, fasten your seatbelt. And as soon as you're in there, you could take your seatbelt off. And if they're expecting turbulence, they say, we're expecting some uh, turbulence up here, fasten your seatbelt. I've ridden the Buck and Broncos, Piedmont Airlines, and Mohawk, and Allegheny, and Lake Central, and North Central, and Texarkana, and those little old DC ones <laughs> and written those things, and you never had to fasten your seatbelt unless you landed taken off, unless you came went through a thunderhead someplace. You know what happened? Long about 1964, 65, someplace, and you got. My, I mean, I know. I've been up so air long, man. I sprouted wings. <laughs> I'd go through that thing. I could. If you want to get plane in Atlanta, I'll take you there and put you on the thing. You don't have to look at the signboard. You take about 1964, 65. I got in that plane, and he said. For your convenience, please keep your seatbelt fastened while you're seated. Well, now, isn't that a dumb thing to tell somebody? Your convenience to keep, is conveniently snapped in like you're in a cage all the time you're flying? How's that for your convenience? Whatever the guy says for your convenience is for his. You better learn that. There's some of these cards saying, don't fold, mutilate, or, you know, or bend. I fold them and send them back and say, for your convenience, huh? it's folded. Now, listen. You know why that fellow said, you know why that fellow said keep in that seat? Because about a year before they began to do that, a plane injured 17 passengers doing a flip trying to get out of the way of a UFO, commercial airline. Passengers thrown all over the plane. Now, every year for 15 years, you know what they say? Keep your, well, I've been in a jet stream, 35,000 feet. And the guy says, in case of turbulence, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> that thing is flying smoother than a Greyhound bus. <laughs> That thing up there at 36,000 feet is just going like that. What do you got your seat buckle fast for? You know what the trouble is? That airline pilot is bugged, boy. He's got the jitters. How many of them? Forty of them. Forty of them. Forty commercial airline pilots on TWA, Eastern American Pan Am, have seen UFOs. You tell me they're not there? They've been seen. They've been photographed. They've been shot at. In January 1975, a squadron of UFOs over a half the length of Japan uh, paraded around. Everybody watched them. People saw them in the cities 700 miles apart. Nothing appeared in radar, although there were 500 telephone calls about it and jam switchboards, about 20 objects flying in formation, and the central control room of Tokyo's meteorological bureau near the airport. The fellow put the radar on all 20 of them, and the radar wouldn't pick up nothing. You can see what you can't pick up on radar. The Air Force Base in Duluth, Minnesota, tracked one of them flying in a V, a ten of them flying in a V formation, July of '65, at 9,000 miles an hour. There isn't any question about them being there. They've been seen. They've been photographed. They've been shot at. They've been tracked. They've been hit. There isn't any question about them being there. The man doesn't believe in there is mentally sick. Ought to go to the nut house. I have back in my library, I have 47 books on UFOs, 47. 
I've got cases there where people said they've not been entered, they've not even, not even tracked and photographed and seen. They've been entered. I don't know if they've been entered or not. There's a fellow up in Nebraska named Shermer, and Shermer claims he was on one, and they told him how the thing operated. They said it was built out of magnesium. said it operated in magnesium. And he said this. He said the way that thing took corners so fast at 2,000 miles an hour was real simple. He said it was an outside disc rotating like this and an inside disc that could rotate the same way at the same speed or the same way at a different speed or rotate objects at the same speed or objects at a different speed. And he drew a diagram to show when that outside object went like that, the people inside the compartment were making the turn like this while the thing inside is spinning at a different rate. All right, they've been shot at. They've been collided with. They've been entered. Now, about folks say, have you seen the UFO? I've lost track of them. I've lost track of them. I don't know how many I've seen. If you want to see UFOs, go down to the beach on a summer night. Sleep on the beach down here. Go down July or June and lie down flat on your back and look up and watch the parade, man. I mean, that old light will go, and it'll stop. It'll stop. They are. I mean, I'm no expert, but I know a plane got green red lights on it. <laughs> And when it lands, it puts on a big one coming down the field, you know. I've seen a few things in my time. I don't think it'll go like that. It'll stop. And then it'll go. It'll stop. I've seen the satellites go around. And they weave like that, you know. And they all go, you know, west-east when they go. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about light that goes, and it stops. And you watch that thing get a bear in that thing with the stars and look back there 15 minutes later, and it's still there. And 20 minutes later, and it's still there. And 25 minutes later, it goes off over here and stops. How many of you ever seen anything like that? Let me see your hands. There's 50 people right there. All right, finally, these UFOs have certain characteristics. And I'll talk about them for a while. Now, you understand when I say this, I'm talking about eyewitnesses and testimonies, things I've picked up from here and there. First of all, whatever these things are, they seem to be interested in blood. They've been known to follow blood bank, bank cars, and out where I preach, out in Tacoma, Oklahoma, and out in Abilene, Texas, and out in Graham, Texas. You know, you get, you don't have to worry about the newspaper. I've seen them up there in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, taking the calves out to bury them because they couldn't get a prize for them. In fact, this is the one church gets down there in Honduras. And I don't mean more than one church. One church gets all the care packages out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. See, I mean, you can go down to the dock and find the CA written on the package. You see. And I was out there in, in West uh, Texas, and here's this thing where they find these cow flying around, horses, all the blood gone out of them. Sometimes the organs removed without an incision. All the blood gone you can't find where the thing was cut. Somebody said, well, it's a bunch of high school kids, the college kid with a satanic cult. I wouldn't bet on that. Over half the people said they got in those things, said they had their skin pricked someplace, some kind of people. Somebody's taking samples if they're there. Somebody's interested in blood. Now, you take sulfur ships, they used to come down the Mississippi like they don't much anymore, and they'd come across uh, around Miami and go up the coast that way, which they don't much anymore, and every now and then one of them just disappear. Up there in Chesapeake Bay about six years ago, I got a report from one of my students of a newspaper article where a big old flat top was going up Chesapeake Bay with a load of sulfur, and it just tipped up like that and lost all the load. You know, it's quite something to take a wheelback ore carrier, an iron ore carrier, and take it up and tip it up like that. You don't find many boats like that that tip up like that. I mean, you, you might find a hurricane, put one up on the beach, but you don't find an iron boat that tips up like that. I don't know those flat ones, but that did. They're interested in sulfur. They're interested in magnesium. They're interested in water and electricity, whatever those things are. Whatever those things are, they have been known to go in and out of water. When they come out of the water, they come out like this, I guess. That even might start an air current going. You know, if that thing was big enough and going fast enough, they could get an air current going, you know, like that. Isn't that funny how all those hurricanes come from the same place? They're interested in water. They're interested in electricity. Somebody said, well, those things are angels. No angel's interested in electricity. No angel has to have electricity. I saw something in the paper the other day, one Carl McIntyre's paper about the good angels help, helping the Jews out, you know, and maybe the good angels and the UFOs, maybe they were good angels coming out to help you out. An angel don't need an UFO. Angels in the Bible go up in pillars of fire, and they go up to heaven and back in less than, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. They don't need any UFO. Who ever had an angel in the Bible needed a UFO? They don't need a re-entry capsule and all that kind of stuff. They're not angels. 
All right, whoever these things are in these UFOs, they're varied or stunted. By that I mean of all the accounts I have, these things, some of them are six feet, six feet two, five feet one, five feet four, four feet six, three feet nine, but most of them are given as under five feet. Most of them between three and four feet. I have some accounts that say they wore black uniforms. I have some accounts that say they had displayed feet like a frog. I have some accounts that say they were slick and black like a eel skin. I have some accounts that say they had a mouth but no nose. One said he had a nose and a mouth but no eyes. One said he had eyes but no ears. When these two guys down in Pasco, Mississippi got in the UFO, they got a thing that had a nose on looked like a carrot coming out. And uh, no mouth, a couple eyes. So they're varied. Whatever those things are, they're not all from the same place. Whatever those things are, they seem to be kind of half mechanical and half monster. Somebody said they're humanoids. No, they're not humanoids. They're inferior to human people, evidently, whatever those things are. If they have superior knowledge, evidently they got it from someplace else. Those things are inferior. They seem to flop. They seem to grunt. They seem to move mechanically like somebody's got them on a switchboard. You people that are so uh, gullible, you believe everything you read in the newspaper. Did you see Star Wars? I didn't. Just think, I've missed Star Wars and Jaws. Gee, what a tragedy. <laughs> you know what you had in Star Wars? You had a man going on like this. And right behind the man, there was a machine just like a man coming on right behind him. And right behind that machine, there was an animal like a man coming along right behind him. And right behind him was a machine that looked like a machine. You had all four of them in all grades. It's almost like somebody had got to kind of mix them, you know. May reproduce the man and the animal together, and then maybe the animal and the machine together, you know, something like that. And these things are varied. They have all different kinds of voices. They have all different kinds of movement, but most of them are given to stunt. I'll tell you some things you know about them for sure. Number one, none of them have a concern for souls. <laughs> Did you ever run a UFO occupant that told somebody how to get saved? They don't have a concern for souls. You say, what am I going to do if one of those things shows up in my backyard? I know what you're going to do. I know what I do. I mean, if I looked out my window one night and saw little green things come across the yard to get me, <laughs> and a blue glow out in the Noonan Construction Company, I know what I do. I put my finger right out that thing right on it and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, you unclean spirit, you devil, in the name of Jehovah God, Mother, Blood of His Son, get out. And I'd find out what made that thing work. <laughs> I bet I'd blow every fuse in it. All right, now, where are these things from? In conclusion, where are these things from? Well, they can only be from one of three places. They're either extraterrestrial or terrestrial or intraterrestrial. <laughs> which is a long way of saying upstairs, downstairs, or in the middle. Those things are from outer space, or they're from on this earth, or from under this earth. Now, I'll eliminate some things. I don't think they're on this earth. If those things come from on this earth, it's a bunch of Germans down in Argentina playing rock, if that's what that thing is. I don't think they're from here. I don't think they're from outer space. Now, if they are from outer space, they might be. If they don't manifest uh, a thing like outer space, if they're a superior civilization in outer space, what do they need electricity and water for? If they're a superior civilization knows all about man, what are they interested in blood for? They know what blood is. I mean, every angel in heaven knows what blood is. A cherubim bend over the mercy seat and look at it. Any problem there? You say, where do you think they're from? Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 9. Maybe the Bible doesn't have a lot of things in it, but I'll tell you one thing it's got in it. It's got something coming up from downstairs that looks just like Star Wars, only worse. Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, verse 2. And if it comes up from the bottom, it comes up from sulfur. Revelation 9. You see the word brimstone? Verse 18. See it? Verse 18. Brimstone. You see the word brimstone? Verse 17. Brimstone. See it? You see verse 11, that's Charles Manson's life verse. Charlie Manson said that was him. He said he was the angel of Revelation 9, verse 11. All right, chapter 9, verse 2, he opened the bottomless pit, there rose a smoke out of the pit, at the smoke of a great furnace. What comes out? Verse 3, locusts. But my, what locusts? Verse 7, they looked like horses, they had faces like men, they had hair like women, they had teeth like lions, and they had wings. 
winged horses that look like men, women, and lions. You know what those are? They're monsters. Those things are mutations. They're deformed. Those things are monstrosities. What the devil is getting you ready for is to receive the monsters. You got your happy little monster Saturday morning on TV. You got the monsters. You live in a day and age when for 20 years they've been getting you ready and preparing you to receive something that's ugly and terrible as something beautiful. It's perversion. They're teaching you if something is twisted and terrible, it's beautiful. It's not. You know what they're teaching now? They're teaching these colleges as kind of an upsurge. <laughs> there has to be a place where the animal line breaks down here, and then an outside force comes in and lifts it up to here. It's a dead lift at each start. You know what they're doing? They're shooting out rockets. They're going up to Jupiter, going up to Venus, going up to the moon, going up to Mars. You know what they're trying to find out? They're going to try, what was this outside force that came in and got this thing going? Now, wouldn't that be something? I mean, suppose they got up to Jupiter someday and land, which they probably won't, but suppose they did and found somebody up there and they said, listen, I was down that earth 20 million years ago, me and my friends. We call ourselves the sons of God. And we were the people that got you out of the animal stage and got you over the gap. Why, you'd have to worship them. They'd be your creator. And they'd create you by a physical act of procreation. You'd have to put that in your worship service Sunday morning. Now, wouldn't that be something? Now, I'm going to guess. I'm just guessing. If I was going to guess, this is what you call an uneducated guess. <laughs> if I was going to guess... I would guess about the time of Noah's flood there were sons of God down here. And I would guess the Lord had a purpose in killing all those animals. Do you ever wonder why the Lord told Solomon not to go down to Egypt to get horses? Seemed like a dumb thing, fellow fella. Do you ever wonder why the Lord had old David take all those horses of the Syrians and cut their ham hocks so they couldn't walk? That's a terrible way to treat horses. Do you want about that? Let me tell you something, brother. This book here is the foundation of the universe. If there's a problem anywhere, it'll be right in here. And it'll be a solution for them. Right in there. You know what I think? I think when those fallen angels came down, all kinds of things went wrong. I think all flesh corrupted its way upon the earth. Not just man. And the Lord drowned a whole bunch out. I think about that time somebody found a way to get off this place temporarily. Or get under it temporarily. And whatever it was, wasn't just human flesh. They all drowned. And whatever it was, wasn't just animal flesh and whose nostrils was the breath of life. Whatever it was, was monstrosity. Mutation. I think they've been around for a long time. I'll tell you something else. I think they're coming back again. You say, what's the solution? What's the solution? Don't be here when they come. <laughs> Folks say, how soon is this stuff going to start? I don't know how soon it's going to start. But I know if they land and take over, every Bible in the world, his name's going to be Mud with a capital M. Now, if I were you, I'd stay prayed up, stay in fellowship with the Lord. And if I were you and I wasn't saved, I would get saved if I walked out that door this morning. Now, we're going to be stand to be dismissed in prayer. I'm not going to give an invitation this morning. I'm just going to put this on you and turn you loose. Like you say in the old radio programs, good night and pleasant dreams. <laughs> They're there. Listen, listen. It isn't just elect angels, First Timothy. Not just fallen angels, Revelation 12. It's principalities, powers, the rules of darkness, world, spiritual wickedness, and high places. There are four things up there besides angels and demons. There are four more different kinds, and they operate up there. All right, let's stand for prayer. Now, I'm just guessing now. I haven't guessed much there. That's all pretty straight, but I'm just guessing now. Maybe one of these days of night, let's suppose tonight. Suppose tonight, say in about uh, three minutes would be good. <laughs> Two minutes would be even better. <laughs>
and about, suppose about now, bam, there's a light out there and that glass goes flying and you hear, da 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 I mean, the sound of a trumpet, it probably, dun dun da dun da dun da dun da dun da dun you know, or maybe, da 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 and you hear that thing go like that? You hear that thing go like that, and then you hear a boy say, I'll hear, I mean, he'll call his own sheep by name. Pete Ruckman, come up here. Whoosh, I'm going, man. And about the time we sail out over there at Rome, comes down the prettiest UFO you ever saw. <whistles> nothing like scientific progress. Hey, Darwin, nobody. <laughs> and that thing comes down there. Nothing like, nothing like college education, you dumb monkey man. And out of that door opens up like that, and a gorgeous figure steps out there. He might even be 13 feet tall, man. I mean, they were giants in the earth in those days. I mean, Superman got to show up. And he'll step out of there, that place, boy, and that mob in Rome, he got it out there, killing their bees and flipping their flops and all kind of stuff. And, this, you know, it, it's a vision of Mary, you know, hail fatty for team and all that bunch. And about that door up like that, and he'll step out of there and say, Peace be unto you. Behold, as I myself, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see ye have. And there's the spear thrust right there, and there's the stigmata. I mean, every ten years they've got to come in and church, and their church professes to have them. They're the wounds right there. And that bunch of deluded, fanatical, papist idiots will say, I never had the right church! Ah! You know. And about that time, he'll step down and say, we've removed these people to planet X, and you'll be the next to go. In the meantime, I've come back to bring peace on Earth from outer space. And the signs will say, I knew it, I knew it, there were people on the planet, I knew it. <laughs> and he'll stand up and say, I am the Christ, and all the dumb, stupid Jehovah Witnesses, and all the dumb, stupid Seventh-day Adventists, and all you dumb, stupid Presbyterians, you dumb, God-defying, Bible-rejecting humanists that knew Christ was coming back but weren't saved will say, It's the Lord! He's come back! And you'll be damned. The Bible said God will send them strong delusion. That Indian will take one look and say, Good, now we get country back. <laughs> Yeah, man. And all those natives out there in Africa and New Guinea that have been waiting for the gods to show up will say, That's him. I told you we were right. And the whole world will go after him. And he'll be the devil. 